Hello, I'm Dr. Monique Lewis from Griffith University. My study considers the influence of a doctor's lobby group on health reporting of complementary and alternative medicine, or CAM, in Australia. So I was interested to map the framings that have been used in news stories over a six year period between 2011 and 2017, since this particular lobby group called the Friends of Science in Medicine, or FSM, became quite active in their campaigning. This group has publicly expressed its concerns about the presence of complementary medicine courses in universities, which is where their campaigning started. However, over the years, their message has spread to framing complementary medicine more broadly, including quite diverse and distinct therapies like acupuncture, traditional Chinese medicine, chiropractic, and products like herbal and vitamin supplements. I used content analysis to investigate 76 stories supported by Invivo to map the framings that have occurred across the 2011 to 2017 timeframe in mainstream, national and metropolitan media outlets. So what were the main findings? Well, the overall tone of the headlines and reports were negative towards CAM. There was a strong tendency towards stories that had framings about ethically questionable, profit-driven CAM companies and CAM professions. There were also many articles that portrayed CAM as a largely illegitimate approach to healthcare. So something that should not be in universities, that carries poor evidence to support its benefit and that needs careful regulation. These framings, particularly about illegitimacy, are very much aligned with the FSM's position statement about CAM, which is published on their website. The main voice that resonates across these news reports comes from FSM. So we know that with news reporting generally, there'll typically be lots of different groups clamoring to have their own message and frame dominate news reports. But in controversies about CAM, journalists in Australia seem more likely to gravitate towards sources they perceive as rich in medical and scientific expertise perhaps unaware of the inherent political contestations at play, such as boundary work being enacted by FSM. In light of this, it's also worth pointing out the silence from the many CAM researchers working in Australian universities in these news stories. There are a number of other factors that may be attributed to the framing bias across these stories, such as time pressures on journalists, effective engagement with media by FSM members, and reluctance by CAM research scientists to engage in the media debate. In these reports, most journalists are not interrogating the possible vested interests associated with one of the most elite and prestigious professions in Australian society, the quotes and frames of which appear to be an exercise in social closure. The readiness of journalists to uncritically adopt the FSM frame relates to Entman's concerns about slant and bias in media framing and the power that it may accord to privileged interest groups and individuals. In terms of influence, well, measuring this is for a future study. It appears that the FSM news stories don't seem to be having an impact on people's consumption of products and therapies, but the influence is likely to be happening at the level of policy making and governance. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to get in touch, please feel free to send me an email using the address on the screen. Thank you.